Biceps, two heads, two questions. Do you have to curl? And does the type of curl make a difference? The short answer is maybe not. And it does make a difference, but not what you might expect. The long answer starts with the anatomy. Two attachments on the scapula merging into one on the inside of the radius. That means it crosses three joints, shoulder, elbow, and radial ulna. Fully contracted position supinated, bent elbow, shoulder flexion. Fully stretched position, pronated, straight elbow, shoulder extension. The biomechanics texts are very clear that these are very weak positions, the insufficiencies that your body generally avoids in daily life. Let me interrupt myself to address the extremes of muscle length the fully stretched or passive insufficient or the fully contracted or active insufficient positions. It's not only those positions that interfere with muscle function. So it's not as if you have a flat level of muscle force and then you hit those positions and it falls off the table down to zero. For starters, it never goes to zero because you can always hold statically. But in between these two positions, you do have a, a peak of force. Now, while the peak is the strongest, there is a range of lengths around the peak where your muscle strength or function is relatively unaffected, at least compared to near the extremes. Now, outside of this, of this range, there is a crossover point where you're getting closer to the extreme positions and your function and muscle strength will be affected. It's a slope, not a cliff. Now, the body normally avoids these extreme positions in daily life, but if you do some kind of concentration curl or some kind of extreme stretch position curl, you do run into these positions. Now, if you load these areas, near fully contracted and near fully stretched, all you do is reduce the weight in your hand. Okay? You never flatten the curve out by developing more strength at the extremes, and you never invert the curve where you're stronger at the extremes compared to in the middle. In practice, when you do load these extremes, such as with a concentration curl or some extreme stretch position curl, you have to notice a difference in weight. Uh, nobody concentration curls, for instance, more than a good standing, standing curl. Now, while these curves are true, they are academic, literally. What we really need to know is what are the joint angles and limb positions that are around the peak torque, and then in turn, what exercises load those positions. We're not concerned with loading here or here, but there are two strong biomechanic positions for the biceps. Now remember, the biceps doesn't attach to the upper arm. So if the shoulder moves, it changes the length of the biceps. One strong position is stretched over one joint, shortened over the other, stretched over one joint, shortened over the other, the so-called sawing action. So. The answer to the question, do you have to curl, is maybe not. If you're, if you're happy with the size of your upper arms, if you row, chin, pull down, or even deadlift heavy enough, you can omit curls and lose nothing functionally since all those movements load the sawing action. Functionally, the biceps aren't that important. Other muscles supinate, other muscles flex the elbow, other muscles flex the shoulder. If you avulse or rupture the biceps, you may lose some shoulder stability. Now, so that, that strategy may not work for your upper arms because the texts say that the biggest muscle in a chain will bear the load as a way of the body saving energy. And since the lats and traps are the biggest in those, cha in those chains, if you don't go heavy enough, there'll be no reason for your body to use the biceps. But that's biomechanics.
to the beach. Okay, so if the pull-heavy strategy doesn't work for you, the other biomechanically strong position for the biceps with the shoulder fixed is reported at about 70 to 90 degrees of elbow flexion, right about there. Well, where's the sticking point in the barbell curl? Also at 90 degrees of flexion. So if you do a curl without a lockout, like so, it actually does a pretty good job of matching resistance torque to muscular tor torque, as opposed to this, which would be with a lockout, straight elbows, lifting up, and then resting at the top. Okay, so lockout, no resistance, no moment arm, difficult, no moment arm again, and then with no lockout. Okay, some moment arm at the bottom. The effort and resistance are more evenly matched. Now what happens when you go too heavy or you get too fatigued? Okay, invariably, you get some lean. Now some would call that cheating. No, this is cheating. Okay, that's a cheat. This is something else. Now, ordinarily, <clears throat> when your center of gravity goes outside of your base of support, like so, you should lose your balance. But you never see people curling, falling on their face. And when the barbell moves forward, it's the same effect as your center of gravity moving outside of your base of support. What happens is, <clears throat> as the center of gravity moves forward, the muscles around your spine pull your head and shoulders backwards to maintain balance. It's not the same as a heave or a cheat, it's involuntary. Okay, one fix is to use a split stance to give yourself a broader base front to back. So now, when the barbell shifts forward, your center of gravity stays within your base of support. And you don't lean. Now that's a low-tech fix. Let's take a look at a couple of higher-tech fixes. <clears throat> 